How's everybody doing? Tinkering with Harleys. I want to thank all of you who have subscribed. Um, I'm watching the numbers grow. Uh, it's great. Thank you very much. If you're watching these videos and you enjoy them, by all means, please subscribe. So that aside, because I tend to forget things, so that I got to put in front. Uh, today we're going to talk about changing the spring on a pawl shifter. Now, this is a question that I've gotten quite a few times, and I put a demo transmission together, and we're going to cover that today, and we're going to be a little bit more explicit. I've had a couple of, well, more than a couple of people write in asking me to be a little bit more specific. Those of you who know bikes and things like that, you already know what I'm talking about, but for the guys that are just starting out and doing things for the first time, I understand what they're saying. When I do things, I assume everybody knows what I'm talking about, but unless I actually describe it, um, you don't. So we're going to be a little bit more detailed. So this is going to be in a couple of segments because of time. Okay, so what we're going to do here is here's a Paul shifter, which you've all seen me show before. And this little spring right here, every so often they get weak or break. Um, what we're going to do with this is we are going to show you how to replace the Paul shifter that spring while it's in the bike without having to remove your clutch compensator and inner primary. If it, this is going to be on a soft tail. Um, so you guys with the Dynas, and I've heard from you before, and not only the Dynas, but other bikes that don't have the horseshoe oil tank, um, this some of this stuff is not going to be applicable to you. But those of you that have a soft tail, this stuff is going to be a must. So all that aside, let's get started. First thing you need to do is disconnect your battery. Um, you don't want any juice running into the bike for the simple reason we're going to be taking the starter out. The second thing you need to do is drain your oil only if you have a horseshoe oil tank not a dyna that has the lower oil tank because you're going to have to remove the oil tank to get to this and drain the oil on your oil tank you're going to have to remove the oil tank and the battery because the battery sits inside the oil tank now, one of the other things I like to do anytime I work on a transmission, even though you don't have to for this, I drain the oil on the transmission also. I like to have the transmission dry, and I like to look at that drain plug. I like to look at the metal. You know what? There's normal metal shavings on that drain plug magnet, and... One of the things when you pull it out, if you wind up with chunks of something on there, there's something more wrong that uh, just changing the spring isn't going to fix. So it, it's just general maintenance on a transmission. And you should change your transmission oil at least once a year. Um, so we covered changing your oil and again only on a horseshoe oil tank you have to drain the oil and remove the oil tank on a dyna or other models without the horseshoe oil tank you don't have to mess with the motor oil drain your transmission fluid you're also going to have to drain your primary um, and remove the outer primary cover um, because you're going to have to get to that jack shaft for the starter so you remove the oil tank, you remove the outer primary, uh, and then you get to the starter and you remove the starter. Um, and I'll, 
I'll show you why. I mean, I'll, there's, I'll put a picture up here so you can see how tight that's wedged in there. The other thing that you're going to need to do is the shaft that comes down, the support shaft that comes down to the transmission. You don't have to. You can get in there with your Allen to, to, to loosen the, the one up. But it's a whole lot easier if you take the bolt out of that support on the transmission and just move that support forward. And that way you can get to that one Allen on the top of the transmission on that cover. And you're also going to have to remove your, at least your rear exhaust pipe. And depending on what sort of exhaust system you have, you may have to take off both. It depends on the bike you have. Um, but I can't stress enough what I'm demonstrating or showing you pictures of. This is only for soft tails with the horseshoe tank because I've heard a whole bunch of guys from a whole bunch of guys that have dinas with the low oil tank and other models like ultras and things like that that have the low oil tank that don't have the horseshoe tank. So that I want to be specific on. Um, so once you have your exhaust pipes off, you've drained the oil in the horseshoe tank, you've drained the oil in the transmission, you've drained the oil in the primary, you've removed your outer primary cover, you can start to take things off. You remove the oil tank, then you remove the, the starter, and that's why you have to take that outer primary off because you have to get to the jack shaft and you take the two bolts for the starter. You take them out, you take the wires off and you, you pull the starter out. Um, you can leave the jack shaft sit in there or, or remove it. I like to remove it to give myself as much room as possible. Um, and then you can start to get to the transmission. Now doing it this way, it this is just simply so you don't have to pull your clutch and compensator and inner primary off. It requires a few less steps, but you have to be extremely careful when you do it. Now, the transmission that we're going to be working on, this is a 2000 to a 2005 five speed. And this is, again, is the pole shifter that goes to it. Now, from 84, I believe it is, to 98 or 99. I think they made both in 99, if I'm not mistaken. But I know 84 to at least 98, they did not use this type of pole shifter. And I don't have one of the older pole shifters to show you, but... If you see these springs here, there's a stop that runs through your case that goes into there and it goes in between. It, it, it stops the lower part of the pole shifter from moving and it helps it spring back. Now what's different on the older uh, pole shifters is it doesn't have the spring here. It wraps around here and goes around each side. Now this is a better design. The older ones uh, were a little bit more difficult. So, but what I'm going to be showing you on this, because the top end of it remains the same, you can do this with the older soft tails also with the older, older pole shifter. Okay, now this is the one that's tough to get to. And this is where the support goes that comes down off the frame that supports everything. You just take this torque out of there and you can slide that support back just a little bit enough so you can get your, your Allen into here. It makes it a little bit easier. You'll need a, a, a swivel head to get at it. Um, but it makes it a lot easier if this is moved back some. You can do it without taking this off, but it's a lot tougher. And once that's off, 
and you got all your bolts out, you can get right to it. And that's the ball shifter right there. That's what we're going to be, be changing is this little spring right here. Okay, so now this this is a five speed. This is a two thousand to two thousand and five five speed, um, and obviously I have this on the bench on the bike. It'd be a little bit different, and replacing this on the bike is not going to be an easy task because it's still going to be tight. Um, but what you do is. You take this spring and just pull it down like that and lift the pawl up. While it's on the bike, you can take this, this drum off without too much problem. A little bit tight, but you can do it. Now the the drum and these these two brackets here, they're actually called pillow blocks. And this holds your drum in place. To remove that, you've got these four bolts. And they take a 7 16 so you just crack them loose. And again, this is a demo trans. Um, nothing's tight. This is a couple of trans five speeds put together so we can demonstrate things. You just take these out of there. like this and keep them set aside. I always like to put them in the uh, the top of the, the top cover of the, the transmission. That way you keep track of them. you know where they are all the time. And then you just kind of wiggle this off of here. And there's your drum. Now you can see your forks in here. Um, I've already got the side cover off of here. You don't have to take the forks out to do this. But now you have a, a pretty good working area to get to the the spring and the clip that holds this on so what we'll do is and this is really important you want to take when you're doing this especially in the bike Because you don't want anything to drop down inside here because if something drops down in there, now you are going to have to take the clutch and compensator inner primary and you're going to have to pull the, the forks out and you're going to have to pull the door out because anything that drops down in there is, it's not going to work. Now, if you look right here, and I don't know how well you can see it. There is a stop for those lower springs that I showed you before, these two right here. There's a stop that goes right in between those two springs. So what you want to do, you want to take a rag or a bunch of rags and get it down into the area that you're going to be working on. You definitely don't want anything to drop down inside that gear set because that's going to make it, th then you're defeating your purpose if that happens. So if you take some rags, make sure everything is covered. If by accident you should drop um, 
a little snap ring or the spring itself, it's going to go on to the rag rather than going down into the transmission. And even if you're afraid to touch it, you're afraid you might knock it down, this spring, it's, mag it, it's steel. You can take a magnet and you can pick it right up if something should drop right in here. And usually where they drop is right down in here. I've just got everything covered just for safety's sake. So that's where we're going to end this today. And we're going to do it this way um, because of time. Uh, I realize some of my videos run long and... It, they run too long, and it, it you're not getting the full benefit out of it. So the next video we're going to take, and we're going to actually remove that spring. Um, now, one thing I didn't say is if you broke this spring, a piece of it's missing, uh, you don't want to do this. You're going to need to pull the gear set out because... That little piece of spring has gone down into your transmission and it's grinding around in there. It doesn't do your gears any good. And if it gets into your main bearing, you're going to re be replacing a main bearing. So if you've actually broken this, unless you can find the whole spring, which in most cases I've seen, you cannot. Um, but if you get lucky and you can find it, you don't have to do it. But otherwise, my recommendation is to pull the gear set out, blow it out with compressed air. If you have an air compressor, you can do it with an air compressor. If you don't have an air compressor, you can go to like a, one of those Office Max or one of those places, get a can of compressed air, and you can blow your gear set off. Um, all the way around. So if there's any metal in there, it'll, it'll blow it out. And then you need to check your main bearing for any kind of metal or any pieces of this that may be in there. Because if it runs with that, a piece of metal in there, that main bearing is not going to last very long. It's, it's, it's going to, it's just going to crap out and you're going to be replacing everything. So until the next time, Thank you all for watching. Once again, thank you for subscribing. And again, if you're watching these videos and enjoy them, by all means, please subscribe. And until next time, everybody be safe out there.